And speaking of the race for the White House, one man who's made headlines this year in deciding not to run is Indiana's Republican Governor Mitch Daniels. His new book is called Keeping the Republic, Saving America by Trusting Americans. And Governor Daniels joins us this morning. Good morning. Hi, Jim. Let me ask you a question to start off. Herman Cain didn't just win in Florida this weekend. He had more votes than both Governor Romney and Governor Perry combined. What does Thank that you. tell you about the state of the Republican field? Thank you. Well, let's give Herman Cain credit for being an interesting and, uh, and forthright fellow, but I think it clearly says that folks are asking for a little more from our front runners. They're, I think, sending them a message. They'd like to hear a little more uh, clarity, a little more specificity, and uh, I hope we get it. You know, earlier this year, you were certainly top tier, if not the uh, front runner in this race. When you see what's happening with, with the inability for, of a single uh, candidate to sort of get some traction, does it make you rethink your decision at all to get out of the race? Oh, it's never been my practice uh, much, Jim. Um, and uh, so the answer, I guess, would be no. But it certainly makes me uh, feel, as I have felt all along, that uh, our candidates have a real obligation next year. This country's hanging on a knife edge. If people couldn't see it before, they can look at uh, Europe and see it today. And um, I think the situation calls out, calls on our party and whoever leads it uh, to um, uh, trust the intelligence and the maturity of the American people. Let's tell them exactly how big the fix is. Let's tell them exactly what it'll take to get out of it so we don't... Uh, wind up looking like uh, Greece does today and other countries soon will. So is there room for another Republican in the field right now? There's room for a, a bolder, clearer message. Again, one that, uh, you know, bets on the uh, uh, common sense of the American people, their willingness to uh, support big change. But, you know, I hope we'll speak a, a language that's affirmative and that is unifying and invites all Americans, even those who disagree about other things, to come together on this one threat are the debts we've piled up, the unpayable commitments we have uh, booked for ourselves for the future. And uh, th this is something that threatens every one of us, of every race, of every station in life, certainly threatens the young uh, more than anyone. And you know, let's go to work on it while there's time. And I really think Americans would support that. And our candidates need to be, uh, I think, a little uh, more confident, a little more trusting in the American people. All right, Governor, let me ask you about your meeting with Governor Chris Christie uh, of New Jersey last week. Is he somebody who can carry this message in the kind of clear language that you're, you're talking about right now? Well, Chris Christie's the kind of person, I mean, he's doing it in New Jersey. If he can make it there, he can make it anywhere. And uh, given the problems that they've had, I just think the world of the, of the guy, but I respect his point of view and his decision. Um, what did he tell you? Is, is his decision to not get in this race final in your view? I have no idea, and I sure didn't press him. I was out there hawking a book, you know, and he was helping me do it. We were having a good time, as we always do when we're together, but he's a very serious figure already on the American stage, and, but it's entirely up to him and his family to decide if, if now's the time, and I think we should all respect that if, if he, if he uh, wants to stay on the job he was hired for. We've got about 30 seconds left. What does he have that is currently lacking in terms of exciting Republican voters. What, is, what does Governor Christie bring to the mix? Well, leaving the other uh, folks aside who I think have lots of potential, I think what we uh, all like about Chris Christie is that he's, he's clearly there for the right well, reason. He just wants to make his state better. He'll tell you exactly uh, what the problems are, and he'll tell you exactly uh, how he'd propose to fix them. And then he doesn't back down when the inevitable uh, special interest pressure starts. Uh, we'll leave it there. Governor Mitch Daniels of Indiana, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you.